Kristen Hirsch's memoir, Rat Girl, is an unvarnished and often hilarious account of a year as a singer in a band at the beginning of the alternative rock scene. The year is 1985, Kristen is still a teenager, and she's trying to find her voice as a musician. But Rat Girl is also the story of how Kristen, 25 years later, found her voice as a memoirist. She joins us today to talk about her book, her music, and her life. Kristen, your memoir is called Rat Girl. Why did you decide to call it that? Well, I didn't. Penguin did. <laughs> <laughs> it was called paradoxical undressing, which is a phenomenon that occurs in people freezing to death. They tear off their clothes because they're convinced that they're burning, not freezing. And uh, I likened my uh, stage fright to freezing to death, and yet um, my obsession with with music and bringing it to people it's like sort of like tearing off your clothes because you think you're, you're burning yet you're on a mission uh, so it was called paradoxical undressing and um my editor at penguin felt that that was a, a whole lot of syllables for americans <laughs> and and i agree i i actually i love that americans shy away from pretense i like that it's important to us to be to be nice and not confuse each other. And um, I liked the, the comic book sound of, of Rat Girl because I knew I was going to use Gilbert Hernandez uh, for the cover art who that does the amazing uh, graphic novels in the Love and Rocket series. And um, I thought that was a good spin. A, a, a graphic novel is a, a great play and... I think we we all should see our memories as such. You write effectively about the actual experience of singing. What was that like? Is it is it hard to translate an experience you hear into an experience you read? I was actually used to speaking about it because I've been doing press for 25 years. So I was used to trying to put something into words that was very visceral. And I had talked a great deal about what the experience is like for me, which was interesting to them because I didn't seem to sing like anybody else. And in fact, my number one rule in the studio is no singing at all because it, it gets in the way with of the, the visceral response, the vocal visceral response. If you if you sing and you treat your voice as an instrument, you're at, you're bossing it around. You're telling it what to do. But if you you vocalize and you let the song kind of rip its way through your lungs, you're you're in a, in a different place. And you're in a place where you're not you anymore. You're you're you and everybody else. You're you're us instead of me. And that's that's what I had to learn to articulate when I was much younger. It feels like inflatable words swelling up in my, my throat. Girl, you write, I don't write songs to describe what it's like in here. I, it's just like this in here so that I can write songs. Is that true of writing nonfiction as well? Oh, that's a good question. It probably should be. Um, but I'm not sure prose is my calling. I think music is my calling, and so it's it's so vivid and immediate for me that the process is um, an unselfconscious one. But I I think my book wasn't very good until I got unselfconscious in it and let it write itself the way it wanted to be. Um, so I imagine yeah, that's what it that's what it should be. I'm just very much against self-expression. I, I think <laughs> I don't think that's our job. I think self-expression is what you do first. You get rid of all your your baggage. You get rid of all that is um, specifically yours until you get to the universal. Not that you are without your idiosyncrasies. And some of those are very deeply ingrained, and some of those we share with others. But I think there's a point where self-expression is not. Um, valuable, and that point really should be publishing. It really should be. If you decide to share this, then it shouldn't be telling a dream at the water cooler. <laughs> Interesting. Kristen, thank you.
Kristen Hirsch's new book is Rat Girl, available in paperback from Penguin Books. And she's nice enough to let us play the title song from her new album, Crooked. Thank you for joining us for this edition of The Literary Life. You can get more information about the books and authors featured on this program and can listen to this episode and more at www.penguin.com literarylife.